Hey YouTube, today I just wanted to go over pricing video work as a small production company. I am definitely not saying that this is the best way to do it or the only way to do it, but um, it is currently how I do it, um, and I hope it's valuable to some of you guys. Um, I want to be very clear about the level that I work at. I would say I work on, my company works on uh, small to micro budget commercials and other video projects um, in crews of like two to 15 crew members, um, depending on the project. What's very common is getting a call from a client and we would typically call this like a discovery call where you're figuring out how best to serve them and what their needs are, what video production needs they have. Um, one thing I should mention about my company is a lot of my work within my company is direct client and there isn't an advertising agency involved. Um, so a lot of times this is a marketing person um, who is, you know, part of part of a business that needs production services um, that I'm talking to. And there's a whole system and a lot that can be said <clears throat> about how to have a call with a client. This isn't really that video. It's very common to have a client ask you for a price over the phone. And that's something that I just try to avoid at all costs. I basically, I never give a price over the phone because there's just so many factors that go into pricing out video work. Um, and it's just too hard and too complex to do it over the phone. The way I price my video work is I actually don't send the client a traditional bid, um, which would look a lot like an invoice. Um, and the reason for this is one, I really want my bids to stand out and look nice. And two, I don't want to show the client how much every line item will cost. Meaning I don't want to show them my gaffer's rate. I don't want to show them my sound mixer's rate. I don't want to show them how much I charge for editing hourly or how much the red package versus the Sony package costs. And this is because I consider myself a video expert and I feel like I understand what's needed to complete the project for the client. And I don't really want the client getting into those numbers that a producer would be looking at. Um, and saying, well, can we not shoot this on the red? Can we shoot it on a cheaper camera package? Or can we, you know, drop the PA um, out of the budget? I, I would just rather give them a straight up number, you know, hey, this is the cost for doing, you know, said work for you um, at this level. Um, because again, I'm kind of the expert and know how to create that end product for them. So I've been using Canva a lot to create these bids and it's been really awesome. Typically a bid of mine will have kind of a cover page. It will have a little bit about my company in case they're like presenting this at a meeting in, inside their company. Um, it will have a scope of work and job description so it's very clear on what we're doing. After that it will have a page that breaks down um, the numbers so it will line item out everything they're getting but not associate a price with any of those line items and then it will give them one price at the end that's like for pre-production and production and post-production that includes all of these things this is the one price. Um, and then we'll just have a thank you and contact page. So how I come to this document is I will go into my accounting software and I will create an internal estimate for myself. Um, and this will have all the prices line itemed out. So what I do is I start with pre-production. I have a pre-production rate and I figure out how many hours of pre-production this job will take, how many hours I think it will take. And I pad that number to a healthy margin, not enough to be like unfair or anything, but just in case there's extra work that's required that I can easily do that and it's within my bandwidth. Um, any other pre-production expenses, I include all of that. Um, and the same with every other category. So production, 
I figure out the rates for all my contractors. I figure out if we need to rent gear or rent a car or, um, you know, countless other expenses, uh, rent a location, um, any of these many things that you might come into with production. Um, a, another huge one would be like catering for the crew. Um, there is a bunch of items that um, we, we all know need to go into this. So I incorporate those prices as well. Um, Post-production, totally the same thing. Figure out your editor's rate um, and incorporate that in. Um, a lot of editors will work on an hourly rate or they will work on a day rate. So either figuring out how many hours this video will take to complete or how many days. Um, and then I usually have a stipulation in my contracts that they get two revisions and that's it. Above those two revisions, they're going to be paying an hourly rate for additional editing on their project. So once you have all these numbers, um, you're going to take that total and put it into a cal calculator and just times it by 0.2. And that will give you a 20% markup. Um, some companies do 20%. Some companies do 25%. Um, you can choose what feels right to you. I think it depends on how much over you, overhead you have. Um, and, you know, it does get tricky doing this because a lot of times you may be bidding against freelancers that can do these projects at cost. Um, however, it's really important to include this markup because as video production companies, you know, I, I, for one, I have an office space that I have to rent. I have insurances. I have editing software that I need to, you know, pay for those subscriptions. Um, there's these costs, there's these overhead costs, and that needs to be, um, compensated for. And also as you take on more jobs, sometimes, You'll be doing two jobs in the same day or three jobs in the same day. And as the owner of the business, you're going to want it to make sense and be worth your time to be managing these different jobs. It's also pretty understated the risk you take on as a production company. Um, when you're doing these bigger jobs, especially when they're getting, you know, 30, 40, $50,000 jobs, you are taking on a lot of risk. Um, if something goes wrong on the shoot day and you don't deliver the project, I mean, that's just a ton of money on the line. Um, so you need to be compensated for that risk. So anyway, guys, I really hope that helps. Um, I know I kind of rambled on, but um, I, I just hope that helps you bid to your clients and encourages you to add um, a profit margin into your quotes. And I think the main takeaways from this video is one, don't give a price over the phone. Take some time to put together a proper bid. Two, don't line item and associate prices with those line items when you send the client um, your bid. And then three, just make sure you're adding in profit margin. Um, so that you can operate as an actual company and provide services like an actual company. I hope that helps, guys. I will see you in the next one. Later.